Hey, it's Kevin Dewey here, and welcome back to the Pasties Prime YouTube channel, and welcome back to Surviving the Aftermath. So, if you are new to Surviving the Aftermath, uh, it's just at the time when we're recording this, been released officially as version 1.0. Now, I've been playing this game for uh, a little bit now um, on early release on PC, and I'm really enjoying it. And I've learnt things over my time of playing it. Uh, we've had various upgrades, various new versions, that sort of stuff. And I decided in this video to do something a little bit different and to give you uh, my 10 tips for playing Surviving the Aftermath. Now, these tips are not necessarily the obvious 10. They, I mean, some of them are obvious and some of them are not. You know, I'm not going to tell you that one tip is gather so many resources and get lots of wood and get lots of concrete and get lots of metal and all that sort of stuff, right? To me, they're obvious, right? If you've played any sort of game like this before, you'll do that. So what I wanted to try and give you was stuff that was very specific to this game and that maybe were not so obvious to me when I first started playing it. So let's get into it. And uh, they're in no particular order, um, but uh, they're all valuable. So let's start. So tip number one, set a minimum carrier in your colony. Now, what happens is when you are in your game, okay, and my one here is slightly upgraded, so yours may not look like this at the moment, but up here you'll see you have these carriers. And what they are, they're people that are not employed in a job. And they basically carry materials around to building sites, and move things around. Now, if you have zero carriers, nothing will progress, nothing will get built, nothing will move, materials will not get picked up and moved back to warehouses and all that sort of stuff. Now, why you would end up with zero is because as you have jobs uh, available, people will take them. And what happens is you'll have people die, whether that's of bad situations, diseases, etc., or just naturally old age. If they die and they were in a particular job, that will become vacant and somebody else will take it. So it's very easy to end up with zero carriers and then everything breaks down. What you do to avoid that, and this is what I do, you can set any number you want, but you click on your main colony center and go down here and you'll see carrier count and you can set it to a minimum amount. Now I set it to one, you could set it higher, and that could change from start game to late game. Start game, you may say one, the later game, you may want more. If you've got a very big colony, you may wanna have a minimum amount of carriers. What this means is that it'll always have one person as a carrier, regardless of if there's a job available. What it does mean is, is if there's a job available, it, that person won't fill that job. So that job will just stay vacant until you get more colonists. But it allows your colony to continue to progress because you'll have at least one carrier. And you can obviously change this value to whatever you like. So I have it set to one at the moment. That's just because the way I like it. Uh, but you can set it to anything you like. So that's tip number one. Okay, tip number two is do not build or try to avoid building on a fertile land. Now, I personally didn't actually do this. It is a regret that I have from building my uh, area. I'm trying to adjust that now and uh, move things around, but it does mean destroying it and that. So if you want to plan this right, when you go into your overlays here, you can go across to Soil Fertility. And if you click on that, if I stop scrolling out, if you click on that, you will get a highlight of the fertility of the land all around your colony. Now, when I played this, when I set this colony up or this campaign up, I must have set it to be a little bit more uh, available to have good fertile land because it seems fairly green I've seen or I have played with a lot less green than this and you can see here well I've got a, quite a lot of buildings here in the green that really could have been left for farm 
Um, it's probably not so critical in my colony here, but in yours, if you've set it to a higher difficulty, then you could struggle. And here's what you probably should be doing, is putting all of your buildings that do not require fertile land on land that's not fertile. And that would include the red, as long as there's not uh, nuclear waste or pollution, because you can also check your pollution levels. And interestingly enough, it's not actually showing me any pollution. I'm not sure why that is. But anyway, uh, if you can, if you have very limited fertile land, you want to avoid putting buildings there and you want to save that for your farms, your wells and anything else that really requires fertile land. So that's tip number two. Tip number three, get research as quick as possible. Research is your key to developing your colony. It is your path to getting upgrades, right? You've got all of this, you've got your tech tree, same as you have in any one of these sort of uh, build survivalist games, whatever, you've got a tech tree. But you need research. And research in this game does not happen naturally. You do not get research just being. You do not get it for doing nothing. You just don't get it. I mean, some games give you uh, research in small quantities, little by little. This game does not. And the only way to get it uh, that I've found anyway is to go to the world map. And there's two ways to get it in the world map. So my suggestion is to build an outpost as soon as you can. Now, I think to get the outpost, you need to first uh, research. Let me find it in the research table. You need to research frontier outposts, all right? It does mean having to do guardians first. A little bit annoying that it's there, but it is there. So you want to research frontier outposts and then you want to build the outpost depot here where you can create a settler and creating a settler is done by converting one of your specialists to a settler you will lose it it will become a settler who can never be a specialist again you take them to the world map and then what you do is you find an area which has uh, one of these research symbols with a cog okay if it's got a cog it means it's not a place that you can scavenge. It is something that you need an outpost for. And as you'll see here, I have an outpost here. Uh, I have an outpost here. And uh, I got another outpost here. But you will see that each one of these is different. And each one that you highlight will have a different value. So that's the other thing. Check them as well. This one provides 15 research every 12 hours. Uh, this one here provides 25 every 12 hours. This one here provides 25 every 12 hours. So these two would have been my number one priority to get an outpost there. So if you build an outpost there, you'll first convert your specialist to a settler. Your settler will then go there, build an outpost, a research one. You will lose that settler, right? They're gone. Just consider that gone. But from then on, in this one section here, you'll be making 25 research every 12 hours. And the more and more of those you have, the more research you're getting. And you will want it if you're going to advance your tech tree. Because the only other way to get it, uh, and I may not have any visible on this map, is to actually scavenge, similar to, say, this building here, you will find research ones that are not a cog, they're just this yellow circle. They're ones that you can send your specialist to to scavenge. So you will need to do those first, right? So that would be your first priority to get enough research to unlock your frontier uh, outposts and then find some of these cogs and build some outposts in there and get your research coming in on a regular basis daily without you having to do anything at all that it would just trickle in and you will just keep on researching that tech tree so tip number four goes sort of hand in hand with this one but it does con not contradict it but it competes with it and that is to get 
uh, another outpost type, which is your survivor outposts. One thing you will find when you are playing this game is a lack of colonists. It can be very hard to get colonists and it can be very hard to grow your colony and have enough workers in there to develop and get all your resources and continue to advance and build better buildings and all this sort of stuff can be very hard to do without having lots of colonists and they can be very hard to come by. They will stumble up to your camp every now and then but that doesn't happen very often. It can be very rare depending on the difficulty you set to. But what you can do is again convert a specialist to a settler and get it to go out to an area that has, uh, you know, for instance, nothing else in it. In this case here, I do have research here, but if we find, I have another one here. This one here has nothing else in this section to gather, but you can see there's all these buildings, right? And if it's got buildings in it, that means that there will be survivors. And when you build an outpost here, you can get an idea of how many survivors. Now, in the case here, it says 0.66 in 12 hours. Uh, this one here, again, 0.66 in 12 hours. They're not the greatest numbers, right? But they trickle in. But what happens is they will just sit in here. So you don't have to worry about them surprising you in your camp. You don't have tents ready. You don't have a building, whatever else. They would just sit here and they'll queue up to 10, I think they are, of them. And, you know, you can actually see here, right now I've got one of 10 and it'll even tell you the type. Whether you've got an adult, an elderly person or children. And then what you can do is you can check them regularly. And you can then take the survivors and it will send them uh, to your main colony. And then they will turn up at the gate and come in and suddenly you've got new survivors. I found that these have been very, very useful to get me out of trouble because quite often a lot of your colonists will die of old age or disease or whatever else and suddenly you're running out of people. You don't have workers anymore. And constantly feeding your colony with survivors from here has been really useful and really saved my colony in quite a few times. Okay, tip number five, plan for winter. Winter, to, to claim Game of Thrones here, winter is coming, it is always coming, and it will destroy you. So, plan for burners. Okay, now, they will, obviously, they will need logs, so you will need a, a logger and that sort of stuff, but you'll need burners, and you can see the burners have a circumference of heat where you've got red is really nice and warm. Everybody likes that. Yellow, you're pushing your limit. Beyond that, nothing, right? Now, when it comes to winter, you'll if your houses are not heated with these, there are more heating things further down the track through the tech tree. But day one, try to fit in some burners into your plan for building. Because as soon as winter hits, if you don't have these burners, people are going to get hypothermia. Your workplaces are all going to shut down because they're going to freeze. And you're just going to have nothing. So your, your, your plastic, your scrappers, all of those things will shut down if they're not heated. So plan for burners and place them strategically around your colony to make sure that everything of importance is heated okay if you've got stuff that you don't feel is important fine don't bother heating it but be aware that it's going to use quite a lot of logs so you're going to need trees and you're going to need loggers to chop those trees down so plan for burners trust me it will save you in winter okay tip number six is sort of similar but a little bit different if you are up to the stage of running farms, as soon as you get an announcement about winter coming in a day, whatever it is, or a drought coming in a day, click on all your farms and click on harvest now. 
don't care if it's not at 100%, don't care if it's only at 5%, 10%, whatever it's at, don't care. Click Harvest Now. Grab all of those resources as soon as you can, because as soon as winter hits or a drought hits, those crops, those harvests, gone. They are dead. Okay? Now, again, further down the track, there might be stuff in the tech tree that can save you from that. There might be ways to keep it heated. There might be ways to keep it irrigated, whatever. But with your normal, regular farms, normal gameplay, they will be dead as soon as one of those things happens. So you don't want to lose the crops that you've already got partially grown or, you know, whatever it is. Like, for instance, here, this one here, you'll see has a harvest now. And it says it's got a yield of 61, right? So if I harvest now, we're going to get 61 potatoes. That's better than losing the lot right? It may not be the lot. It's not. I mean, it says it's growing at 59%, right? So we haven't got a full crop, but we can get 61 potatoes, which is better than nothing. And that's the same for all our other crops here. We can see here 79%, you know, harvest it now. That's 37 corn. Why not take it? There's some more corn, right? Harvest it, harvest it. And keep in mind that your workers need time to harvest. That's why I'm saying if you get a notice of a day, start planning to harvest straight away because they will take time to harvest. They don't harvest instantly. They're not like magic, you know. They try to make this realistic and harvest like normal people and it takes them time. So that is uh, definitely tip number six. Okay, tip number seven. Watch where you put your wells. Uh, when I first played this game, I didn't think about it. I put my well on fertile land, which is what you have to do. Uh, but unfortunately, I also had uh, a toilet or whatever you want to call it, an outhouse, uh, in close proximity to that well. And what happened was that the toilets in that get contaminated. Uh, because, you know, they're dirty, people are cleaning, they're washing off all of the pollution... Uh, you know, radiation, all that sort of stuff. And they get contaminated and the contamination spreads sort of in an area. It doesn't just stay in that one entity. And I found that my water well was constantly getting contaminated and people getting sick. And I was having to constantly decontaminate my water well, which was very frustrating, right? But if you plan smartly and you put your water well in fertile land, but keep it away from any buildings that may have any source of contamination, you will never have to worry about those water wells. They will just work. You'll never have to decontaminate them uh, unless we get a massive radiation hit or something like that. But generally, you will never have to decontaminate them. They will just sit there and work happily and you won't have to worry. So keep that in mind. Do not put water wells or anything to do with water next to anything that may have contamination as they, you know, work. So tip number eight is, as soon as you can, buy specialists, right? When you start the game, you are going to pick two specialists. You are going to have some coin over here. As you get coin, and you'll get coin by scavenging things on the map, as you scavenge them, Generally, you'll also pick up some coin and things like that. My suggestion to you is that as soon as you get uh, most specialists, I think not if, if not all, there's two ways to buy specialists. One is uh, 700 coin or you can pay something like 400 and some food. I generally keep my food. You know, food can be sometimes hard to gather, get, grow, whatever depending on how you set up your thing. If you've got tons and tons of food, then sure, save some coin. But I find that I just buy the settlers out 700 coin. And so every time I have enough coin to buy a specialist, I will buy a specialist. And what you want to try and do is to try and fill up all 10 slots with a specialist uh, all the time, basically, as much as you can. Now... There's obviously, they, they, they put a delay. So when you buy a specialist, uh, usually the next one, you won't be able to buy for four days. Sometimes they'll also turn up at the door, uh, at the gate, even without you buying them. You'll still have to pay for them, but they'll just randomly turn up. 
just take them, right? If you can afford it, take them. So far, um, maybe late game something might come up. Uh, other than using it for trading, I haven't found any other need for coin. And even trading between other colonies, generally you can just trade materials and don't even need to use coin. But as I said, I like to buy specialists all the time and keep them up at 10. Now, when I get to 10, what I will do is I will generally check the map. And if I have a sector here that could do with an outpost, whether that be a research outpost or a scavenge, or if I need more colonists, uh, a survivor outpost, whatever it be, I will convert uh, one of those into a settler and I will go and build an outpost. That'll then free up another slot. I will then buy another specialist. Yeah, you've got 10 again. Then I'll rinse and repeat. I will convert that to a settler. I will go out and build an outpost. I will then go and buy another specialist and on and on and on and on, right? And this is gonna help you grow and grow and grow, right? Because you're gonna continually have these outposts. They're gonna grab stuff. They're gonna gather stuff, all that sort of stuff. Now, we do need to be a little bit careful because there is some missions and uh, in game. As I said, this is just being released. So I haven't done in game yet. I don't know what's in it, but I do know there is some special stuff. So, you know, you might not want to put outposts in every sector because as soon as you put an outpost in a section, you can't put another one. But look, the reality is if you're doing end game and you find yourself in that position that it stuffed you up, you can demolish these, right? It's not cost effective. You've lost the specialist. You've lost the settler. Uh, you know, you don't want to do it. But if you have to, you have to. It's fine. You know, it's not going to kill you. But the simple fact of the matter is, like I said, I've got plenty of money here. Technically, right now, I should be converting one of these into a settler, getting it out, building an outpost, and then buying another specialist because I've got plenty of coin there to do that. So that is definitely one of my tips. So tip number nine, and this is definitely prevalent for early game and, you know, even helps with late game. But, you know, probably late game, you may have run out of resources by this stage. But early game, scavenge everywhere, right? Get your specialists out into the world as soon as you can. You know, you've got to have the gate built, uh, a few things like that. Uh, get them out here and start scavenging everything, right? Every single part you can grab, everything you can pick up is going to help you. Now, you might want to prioritize materials. Uh, you might want to prioritize research that you can scavenge. Obviously not this, that's a cog, but any that you find that is not a cog one. Uh, you know, I've obviously picked up a lot of stuff here. Uh, you know, but anything you find that's like this, obviously consider these are going to cause damage, but get your specialists out there and start scavenging everything you can. Open up the world, scavenge, 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 right? Because the more they can bring back to the camp, the more you can grow your camp faster, 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 and get new technologies and all that sort of stuff. I would probably focus a lot on uh, research very quickly if, if you can, uh, but, you know, grab the basic materials for the very important stuff. You know, if you have anything that's to do with wood or plastics or uh, clothing, any of those very bare essentials, they're the ones I'd probably prioritize and then start branching out and looking at all the rest. But I would just constantly, all the time, have a specialist out there or a few specialists, whatever you can afford, to have out in the world map scavenging, grabbing everything and bringing it back to your colony. Okay, and then finally, tip number 10. Do all the quests, right? You are going to have quests pop up in your camp. Um, you know, there's little minor quests that people pop up little things. Uh, there'll be the proper ones, which will sort of be purple and they will require you to sort of accept them and then come send a specialist out to the world here and locate the start of a quest. Some of the quests will be, you know, one location only. Some of the quests will be multiple steps. 
Some of them may be quite difficult, some will be very easy. But my suggestion is that you do all the quests, right? They will pop up. Yes, you could ignore them. You could just let them sit there for days and weeks and not do any of them. But they all have rewards and they all teach you something as well. So my suggestion is definitely do all of the quests because you everything that you do in this game is going to benefit you and give you something out of it. Yeah, some of the things will give you a negative if you pick the wrong thing or something like that, but it's all learning experience. Most of the things I've found are never fully negative. If you lose something, you'll get something else instead that's, you know, a reward, right? It's never a total negative thing. Other than some of those little tiny quests that people, not quests, but questions and special things that some of your people do, it is a bit of a random uh, thing, so you also be aware of that. Some of the ones in your colonies where your colonists bring something up, you could get, I've had the same actual question, the same person technically bringing up an idea uh, twice, and both times I'd get a different result. One will be success, one will be failure. They are random. I'm assuming so just be aware of that you can't assume based on a previous attempt at one that it's going to give you the same result because they don't I can 100% tell you they don't I've had both instances but my suggestion is don't ignore anything in this game do everything and anything you can because everything gives you something you will get something out of everything so do it all do everything you can so there you go that is my 10 tips right as I said you know Look, they're not necessarily the definitive tips. They're just things that came into my head that I've found that I wish I knew when I was first playing. They're things that I've discovered. There may be things, you know, some of the things I've said are probably pretty obvious, right? Some of them are stated in the tutorials and instructions, some of that. Some of them maybe not quite so clear, but I just thought I'd highlight some of the things that I prioritize and think about when I'm doing my colonies. Now, you know, you know, you, you could probably come up with a hundred tips if you really wanted to, you know, but I wanted to focus on a few that I thought was very important, well, 10 obviously, and um, hopefully they do help you with your gameplay. Now, I'm still fairly new to the game. Obviously, as I said, I haven't done the end game yet because that's only just been released, um, but I, I will be getting into it. But, you know, so take these tips for what they are. They are based on my experience so far, playing the early access and not necessarily the full release even though the early access in the end is is pretty much the full access just with a few bells and whistles not there and the end game not there and a few things like that but if you do want to watch me playing and you want to check it out then you know check out the channel if you haven't already there is uh me doing campaigns on there and i'm at the moment constantly playing this game um you know every week i'm playing this game a couple of times a week so check it out you'll see me actually just doing playthroughs and building my my uh, colony here and getting through all of the content and you know future content will be obviously catering for the full release so uh right now i'm going to attempt to continue my early re release ver save version and see if the end game will progress with it or not if i find this doesn't work then i will be um, uh, probably just start a brand new colony but you know if you have an opinion about that and you want to see me start a new colony and not continue this one let me know in the comments but obviously I've worked pretty hard on this one so I'd like to continue on with it if I can and then I will start a new colony at some point don't worry about that uh, I will definitely be doing that but um, yeah to check out the other content and uh, you know if you if you if you like what you see here and you want to support the channel further check the description below there's a link you can buy me a virtual coffee uh it just helps me buy games like this the dlcs all that sort of stuff and show them on the channel uh, you know currently i don't get sponsorships i don't get any money from youtube or anywhere else it's all funded by myself and it's all sort of fun based at the moment or fun for me and uh, hopefully it's fun for you as well if you like the video give it a thumbs up if you didn't give it a thumbs down and if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, consider subscribing. Uh, I really appreciate the support and it helps the channel out immensely. I'm trying to grow it as much as I can and get uh, as many people as I can watching my content and hopefully enjoying the content and interacting with me. Uh, and uh, considering that, 
most importantly to me is leave a comment below let me know what you think of this video of the tips that i've given do you have any other tips based on your playing that uh, you think are very valuable to share with everybody put it in the comments let me know it could be something that i'm not aware of or i've missed um, or if you agree with any of my tips or don't agree with them uh, feel free to put them in the comments I'm, I'm very open to constructive criticism and you know i like to take advice from people that are watching my videos as well as i'm happy to give advice if uh if needed so put anything in the comments just chat with me as well i read all the comments and answer every comment that warrants an answer as soon as i possibly can hopefully you've enjoyed the video thanks for watching and i'll catch you in the next one